Hello, hello, Chris. Um, great to have you here. It's wow. the day after. Yes. Um, Toffer presents Chris Liebing. Uh, you played a seven hour set in Toffer last night. Did I? Seven hours from really? one to eight. With a, with a three hour collapse back to back set with Speedy J, like a surprise unannounced set. Um, we had an amazing time. And how was it for you to be back or to, to play for, in Toffer for the yeah. first time? Well, when I do interviews, that's, 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 that's before we start. Sorry, yeah. uh, you have your glasses even yeah, yeah. on because you know it's what? from yesterday. This we're still it? tired, and we don't want to see. You don't want to see our eyes. This like is that. what I wanted to say. It's like <laughs> if I do interviews with my shades on, <laughs> it, was, it was a pretty good night. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! I I, I think that was uh, one of the best times I've had in Rotterdam, c wow. playing in in a smaller venue. Yeah. That was the crowd was amazing. What's going on here in Rotterdam? Yeah, like, lots of girls. I applaud the girls and boys in the club from last night for like going so strong for that long uh, long time and and keeping the inspiration coming. You know, I mean, you have gigs, you know that where sometimes it's like you drag it on and you just like. People show me what to do. It's like it's an interaction DJing, you know. And last night it was just like you didn't even have to think. You just like play, and and then uh, I mean you played amazing before. The, you said such an amazing vibe before. I was sitting there and I had really like to tune into your vibe because I wanted to continue that. I'm not sure if I managed, but I tried my best. And then uh, and then having that flow continuously going with Jochen then uh, showing up and setting up his stuff slowly and like joining in the perfect moment and at some point he was like okay i gotta go sleeping now after i don't know after two three hours which which went by like this yeah you know ah, great and uh wow i'm i'm amazed cool well great loved it as well absolutely really and now we're, we're sitting here with a nice group of people out there and uh having having a great lunch before um we have to head to paris yeah. cool um, you just mentioned uh, Jochen, he, he kind of uh, joined you after two, three hours um, in a small club. I mean, you're used, you used to have the Collapse 3000 project, uh, where you even did albums on Over Me, etc., etc. You did a lot of shows together. Um, how did, because, I mean, how, how did it feel to be back together again in a small club? Because usually you do the bigger venues. How uh, was it to be together in, in a small tunnel like Toffler with this huge... Oh, uh, you, you know, it, the, the size of the venue doesn't really matter when we play together, like from, from the feeling, what we, what we try to create. Um, obviously, it felt way more intimate and it's, it's, it's amazing to do this uh, 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 in, in such a surrounding as well. Um, but we actually played together just n not too long ago um, in... Amsterdam. Did we play in Amsterdam? I think five days off. I'm trying to remember exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, at that time, I mean, we we haven't done uh, a lot of college shows in the past years now uh, because we've really concentrated of also on our individual uh, careers. Um, but we we didn't lose it. It's it's funny. Like when we played in Amsterdam together, we instantly knew it's like wow, yeah. it's like perfectly works out. And the same feeling was yesterday. I mean, we know each other now. We just we just talked about it like. Uh, when we met the first, the very first time, he did a remix for me in 2001, which now is 13 years ago. Um, his son is sitting there, who is 12 years old, which I saw when I first met uh, Jochen, he showed me baby photos. Now this like big guy is sitting there next to me. That's where you see time passes because I, you don't, I don't really feel like how the time passes. Yeah. You know, for me, I, I sort of. Uh, it's instant I, fun, so you're yeah, right, I'm yeah. still this kid inside as well, and and that's why you, you never you, you like really like Oop, what yeah. it, what twelve years have passed? Oh my God, when did this happen? You know, cool. um, and that's where I think this is a good sign for having good fun. And like you said, okay, so you work with Jochem and you kind of like you know activate, inspire each other. Yeah. What are what are your most uh, what does what does inspire you at the moment as an artist as a person? What what, what are you inspired by at the moment? Oh, Let's start with the music wise. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I heard you play, like in the end, you were playing a lot of stuff of your own label, CLR. Yeah. Um, create, Learn, Realize. Yes. Which used to be Chris Liebling recordings. Yeah. Um, I heard a lot of stuff where you were more like 
you know, s arrangements, like with, with vocals, like, <laughs> like Depeche Mode kind of style. Yeah. I mean, and I got the feeling that this is like the direction you really want to go. It's so what, what are you expecting? No, it's about? part of the direction. Part it's of It's like, I, I see a little bit like you see it with your different projects yeah. that, that you have, um, that you can, like your Rod and Benny Rodriguez, yeah. and you make, make a distinction. I, I, I kind of see it that way too when it comes to releasing stuff on the label. I do like, because I'm the kid of the 80s, you know, and I'm... Uh, Honestly, I have to, to admit as well, I went to see how many Depeche Mode concerts last year? Uh -huh. um, I saw on Twitter quite a lot, <laughs> quite, a, quite a few. I think four or five or yeah. something like that. And honestly, I've never really been to the concerts uh, um, that much. And it, it just happened with this tour that I went to a lot of concerts last year. And I must really say that was extremely inspiring for me. Uh, also, from a, from a show and from a from a um, musical point of view, uh, like uh, that that every show was kind of the same set list, kind of, but yeah. every show was different, and the energy was always extremely fresh, yeah. and it also showed me that um, maybe sometimes you worry too much about just playing the latest stuff, and yeah. and, um, and I should like loosen up a little bit, and. Uh, just go a little bit more with what happens in that moment and what you feel like playing and stop thinking about like oh I can't do this or I have to do this because of uh, rules that nobody Expect ever put up yeah. exactly. or expectations that are actually not there they're only in your head so getting rid of this thinking helped me a lot to to uh, to uh, basically also broaden. change my DJ set and yeah. broaden my DJ broaden. set, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that is very inspiring. Them. And then of course it's kind of like this uh, 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 um, hamster wheel kind of thing. It's like the playing is inspiring, and it's inspired the playing, and the playing inspires you, and the yeah. inspiration yeah. keeps you playing. Cool. It's just constantly going this, and 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 I feel. Uh, nights like this last night is extremely inspiring because it makes you think what else you can do, for example, on the label or in the studio. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Because you haven't been producing uh, like under your own name for quite a while, but you've been like executive producing basically yeah. all the records on your label, CLR. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did a, a record as well, and I'm doing a new one. Yeah. And you're mixing. I'm it currently as well. trying yeah, to mix cool, your, cool. your next rock release, the yeah, next yeah, rock. Cool. So big. Played both tracks last you. night. Yeah, no, you know this. Great, yeah, thank you. It was great. Um, but I was wondering, uh, do, do you get your satisfaction out of treating the, the, the projects from the producers as as, 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 the, as a whole, like to work on them, like as an executive producer? Yeah. Do you, do you get more fun in there than you would get out of your own productions at the moment? I, I, didn't, really, I didn't really plan it. It was just all about acceptance. I, I was honestly struggling in the studio to come up with new original material or even do remixes about like four years ago, three years ago. And I admitted to myself, okay, maybe I can't, I, I, I can't do it right now. I, I'm just like, I, I can't do it. Let's just not like force myself into doing this. So I actually quit producing. I like consciously s told myself, I took every machine which creates sounds out of my studio, gave them to my studio neighbors, yeah. cleared my studio up in order to have an only mixed down studio. Yeah. And I told myself, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm, I want to... Uh, you're getting satisfied and fulfilled with this? It, 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 it's I mean, so much fun to, to, to do mix downs and help other artists to, to uh, define their sound. Yeah. Uh, basically, like what we did, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, um, we sat in the studio for a week. Absolutely. And, like, everything and it's Coming to Frankfurt, hanging out yeah, together, the getting the vibe that. going, and then sit down in the studio uh, to, to, to basically capture that yeah. and, and form it into something that sounds 3D, that sounds like forward, and sounds like that, how the artist wants it, yeah. um, but I try to do it as a neutral person. I mean, in rock music, this is common, absolutely. Rock music, it's, it's like every band has their producer. Yeah, because it's quite unusual in techno. In techno, like it's a certain niche genre totally techno not genre. common, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but I wonder why, and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I love to be in that position to help an artist. Yeah. Maybe it's because, yeah. uh, uh, partly because you do not have to be uh, the, the you don't ha you don't need the spark yeah. the creative spark because this the, the artist brings that in yeah. 
So I can put my knowledge into when it comes to mix downs. And I learned so much in the past three years by mixing down so much that again, that now is the time where I get back into making music because I have so, because of all these mix downs, it, feed, it fed me and, and I got back into uh, not only mixing down some stuff, also okay. starting to edit it right. and totally changing it. So suddenly I have, uh, I have new material. All right. And uh, that, is, uh, that is a nice process so that we worked out well. Like, there might be some new I, I am re edit, re, re switch, re I, I totally feel stuff. like I want to make some new music now. Great. Oh, that's yeah. good. Inspiration is great. Inspiration. Rotterdam is always an inspiration. Well, that's actually my next question. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, you know, Jochum, you've been yeah. playing for a while at Collapse 3000. Um, he lives in Rotterdam. Uh, yeah, well, you, did, you made the album actually here in Rotterdam. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, st you know, you stayed here for quite a while. Yes. Um, what, what's your what's your relation with the city Rotterdam? What, how how do you see Rotterdam like, in, in comparison to the rest of Holland, for the, example? The, there is there is basically no com comparison to the rest of the world because Rotterdam is probably the city that I have spent most time in, next to my hometown. Wow, which is Frankfurt. Which is Frankfurt. All right, great. Uh, because in the past 14 years, and especially during the time in 2000 uh, between 2003 2006, I was here so much. Like, uh, I, I stayed at Jochum's and I stayed at different places here. I walked the city. I know the city really inside out. I can walk around, I can show people. <laughs> I pretty much know the city. I have a really, really nice nice connection with that city. So what are your favorite spots in Rotterdam? Uh, you know, uh, now this one here, because yes, it's, we're, we're, yeah, <laughs> it's a vegan restaurant. And so you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're okay, let's, let's continue with the other we're, spots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is the ar architecture of Rotterdam is beautiful. If you if you go towards the harbor or I don't know what the area is called where Masilo is. It's yeah. it's yeah, such the right a half of the yeah, the harbors, yeah. Uh, be beautiful area there. Yeah. Um, you, you, of, co of course, the cubes. The cubes are one of my spe favorite places because it's extremely special. Jochum still has the studio there. He's going to move uh, sooner or later, which which I'm going to be very sad because I've spent so much time in the cubes. And around the cubes and walking around there, I just I just like the vibe here. It is a kind of a similar vibe to Frankfurt, actually. Rotterdam has, and they, and, and they kind of they have a when it comes to techno a similar history, you know. And when you go back in in the 90s, uh, Red, Rotterdam Terror Core, whatever it was yeah, called, yeah, yeah, yeah. we we, we had we had we had uh, Frankfurt hardcore as well. Okay, All you right. know it comes. Uh, I wonder who was first. Yeah, I wonder who was first. We have to, we have to Actually, find out. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just thinking. Yesterday you played Toffler, obviously, which yeah. is a tunnel. Yeah. It's a tunnel below the ground. It's, a, it's an old passenger tunnel. Um, it reminds me of, uh, I think, 14, 15 years ago. I used to go out with my friends to uh, uh, to U6, U60, U60, which yeah. is also a tunnel. Absolutely, it's the same, the same kind of the in same thing. Right? No, 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 Frankfurt. In Frankfurt. No? Frankfurt. Frankfurt yeah, 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 of I'm course, it was in Frankfurt. And Frank yeah, and it's a tunnel as well. Right? It, it kind of reminded me of this. Yeah, it used to be uh, also the same thing as here, like a, an, an underground uh, walkway for yeah. pedestrians. Yeah. Uh, U60 was a little bigger, but it yeah. had the same. Vibe same going. Concept, it's yeah. the same same kind of concept and the same vibe and uh, that was that was for uh, a period of seven years or eight years it's in Frankfurt. It's kind of part of your history as well. Absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. Like almost ten years yeah. that, that I've played in that club. Happened. Exactly. Yeah, well we played yesterday or Friday in Tokyo. So Absolutely. In a way, it was a it all It all comes back in ah, circles. Cool. <laughs> Let's move over to uh, the vegan part of you. Yeah. Uh, I, I know uh, like for the last couple of years, uh, you turned, uh, you, you changed your My lifestyle. Diet. Into your diet. Yeah. To being a vegan, which means no animal products. Yes. At all. Uh, yeah. We're now sitting in uh, Gare du Nord. Which beautiful. Is a beautiful Absolutely restaurant. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, we're waiting people. for lunch. Yeah. Um, what you're you're very you're very fascin or you're very uh, fascinated and very uh, 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 you know inspired by the whole vegan lifestyle. I follow you on Twitter and like every day I get like three, at least three tweets like listen everybody has to become vegan because <laughs> you know you're it, 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 it's the only way. I mean you're very passionate about. No, this. I'm not saying Can everybody tell, has to no, become. I'm not. Very, I'm not forcing people to do that, and I'm trying to to. Um, to uh, not make the people feel like I'm pressurizing anyone, uh, but it's definitely something to look into. I can only, like there's three major points uh, now that I can say now why I'm vegan. I actually turned vegan by accident more or less. Like I stopped eating meat already like uh, 14 years ago or something like that. 
um, out of the idea that I didn't want to be part of the uh, meat industry, uh, let's call it fuck up and, and animal uh, uh, um, abuse, basically. And uh, but I, you know, you 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 don't really think so much uh, further, and this like I didn't either. Like so, I I didn't eat meat like let's say for quite a like ten years maybe. But I ate a lot of fish, and I never made the connection that fish is also an animal. Sort of like you you kind of think like fish swim in the ocean; they don't feel anything. You can eat I'm them. There right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, you do it step by step, and then at some point I stopped eating fish. I just couldn't eat it anymore. And then I became vegetarian, which I, by now, now I know now, is even kind of worse than eating fish. Because you eat a lot of cheese and eggs and milk products. And then you learn more about these industries as well. And then uh, I couldn't eat that anymore, so I turned vegan. That was about three years ago. And I always thought vegans are crazy. This is mad, you know. The first vegan I've ever met is, is a... Uh, um, uh, a friend of both of us, Josh. Josh Wink, you know, and I always thought it like, ah, Josh is a little crazy. How can you be like that, you know? And now you're even more hardcore than him because he occasionally guy. eats a fish. Yeah. I can't believe that, Josh. <laughs> How can you do that? <laughs> but any, no, everybody should do whatever. But um, uh, the thing is, what I can say out of my own perspective now is that I have uh, uh, gained so much energy since. Um, changing my diet it's crazy I need less sleep I have more energy I feel way fitter that's that's one of the uh, things I get less sick that's another thing from a health perspective it's 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 amazing uh, once I turned vegan I started to learn more about the milk industry dairy industry which actually is the meat industry's evil sister it is even worse than the meat industry because uh, when you look at the suffering that cows have to go through I always thought like cows give milk anyways and then I start, and you start to think like, why do we drink milk actually from another animal? I was like, we should only drink milk when we're babies, and that should be from coming from our mother. Why should should why should I drink cow's milk actually? Who tells us to do this? The milk industry does because they make so much money with it, and it makes you sick. It gives you uh, allergies, and I I really still have to fight with some allergy because I used to drink two liters of milk in my life. This is why I can't be mad at anyone drinking milk now because I've done the same fucking thing. Um, but what the only thing I can say now is like I got informed. Like I maybe want to uh, motivate people to inform themselves about what wow. they eat and what consequences the food choice has on the planet. But it's good. I mean, you, you're 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 a very popular techno DJ. You have a lot of followers. You know, people who follow your music, who follow your sound, who follow your vision. Yeah. You know, and it's good to take it out of the techno perspective. And it, kind of try yeah. to inspire people also with your vision outside of the yeah. techno world. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's uh, all connected. It's, let's first, music, food, yeah. everything is connected. Well, that's it's actually like the next like bridge I want to make. It's yeah. like, um, could we say... Uh, there's our burgers uh, coming. Uh, look, so we have to film the burgers. Uh -huh. Vegan burgers. Right after them. the vegan talk, there's the burgers. Absolutely. So Amazing. we're going to wrap it up very soon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just want, yeah, I just want to make the connection. So, could we say that um, next to obviously family life, yeah. uh, you have a beautiful family. Yeah. Could we say that uh, a vegan, being vegan, and techno, these are like the three big uh, pillars in your life, like the three big. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. You ha you have to say I family, I techno, I I, I, I would have never thought that my uh, choice of food or my choice of diet or a plant-based diet basically that I have, that it becomes such a big part in my life. But uh, it automatically does because um, it, it has uh, so much effect on your life and on, on the life around and on the life of my kids, obviously. And uh, also from an environmental perspective. It's, it's not only the perspective of animal suffering that I care about, it's also the aspect of uh, uh, the uh, environmental. Uh, things yeah. that go on and if you find out more about like the CO2 uh, uh, um, uh, uh, footprint of uh, a meat eater and CO2 f footprint of a vegetarian, CO2 footprint of a vegan, it's like down there, it's crazy and it's really good so that's the point and of course the health factor. But is there, is there like, like to, to make it round, yeah. is there, could you make it like in, in, in one sentence maybe like the connection in being a vegan connected into techno. Like, is there, a, is there a, a yin and yang into, or is there, are there like a comp you know, is, is there, a, how, how does it, how does it, it I mean, how does it make sense to each other? Because of the different energy that you have, 
you could put it more into you put it into music. the music and it changes the music that that is that is that is the, oh. the, the thing um, it doesn't happen uh, consciously it happens somehow subconsciously organic. and it's it's yeah it's an organic flow and it's you, you can't you can't take things apart anymore you can't say this is one part of my life and this is another part of my life and it got nothing to do with it. it this is wrong everything is connected it's like it's like my body doesn't stop where the skin stops it, I, I i think it 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 goes beyond that and uh, energy plays quite a big role and uh, what you put in your body is basically energy and it's just in a different form and, and where that energy your sets are most energy. yeah sometimes it works better sometimes it, works doesn't, sometimes it works better sometimes it doesn't work oh, but as it's, well it's what people know you for energy yeah you know, a lot of energy you know your, yeah. your, your sound in techno you know it's very robust very very big sound you yeah know, it's very you know it slaps you in the face it's like if you can't handle this you know you're gone yeah you know and it's well i like my it, bass yeah exactly bass. a lot of bass so, a lot of bass so we could let's try yeah. to make it round we could say no. that the, the energy that you save you know by being a vegan yeah you know it's kind of an energy that you also put extra into absolutely the life Absol itself. absolutely and, and a lot of people wonder is like where did you get your energy from when you're vegan because don't you need that i mean uh, an ox only eats grass yeah. And it's a big animal, yeah, and it yeah, has yeah. a lot of energy. There, yeah. Why, why do I need to eat that animal in order to get my energy? No, I can directly yeah, go yeah. to the source where the energy actually comes yeah. from. And this is what, of course, you need to learn and understand yeah. uh, where you get your energy from and how you process it. And this goes into, of course, the music, into the bass, into 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 everything, um, and into staying fit. I mean, this is a big part. Uh, for example, like last night, we we were in the club for like I don't know. Eight hours, eight hours and and uh, uh, we had a super fun night um, I'm now going to Paris playing Paris tonight uh, tomorrow I'm actually coming back to Holland playing yeah. the seventh Big Sunday yeah, festival seventh, yeah. uh, then at night I go to noise uh, the former club Treibhaus is yeah. called now called 102 where we play together yeah. again yeah. on yeah. Sunday and then on Monday morning at 6 I directly fly to Ibiza uh, to play cocoon on amnesia on Monday night That's a lot of energy you need. Yeah, but I'm but I, I I'm not scared by that anymore because I know it 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 it, it works out. You know, it, I know I can handle it, and this gives you the additional confidence for every gig as well. You know, I don't have to play a gig only on half yeah. steam because I know oh, I have another two or three coming Save up. Your energy. No, I don't need to do that. Healthy. It just yeah. it just it just goes that way, and this is what I kind of try to promote as well. Like well, if it comes to your own health, yeah. Benny. And we're inspired. <laughs> no, we're getting inspired. We're getting inspired. Yeah, we're so, getting inspired yeah. by our burgers down there. One final question before yes. we went, we go over to our vegan burgers, which yeah. I'm very delighted to taste. Um, can you describe in one word uh, what does techno mean for you? A solid foundation. A solid foundation. A solid foundation that is uh, expressed first of all in bass. The bass frequencies are for me one of the most important frequencies. You can manipulate these frequencies on, on such a nice detailed level. And, and sound systems get better and better to uh, transport that. Uh, what, that's not really one word that I'm describing no, but now. We can, well, just go on, you can edit it. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, these bass frequencies basically, uh, you can manipulate them and create moods and vibes and atmospheres with them. And have all the sounds and everything else, the higher frequency, come in as se seasoning, and then we're back at food. You well, know, that's the thing you have a base. To say. Could we could actually, yeah. Yeah, and you put you put a little salt and pepper in there, yeah. and and but you have the solid foundation as the base that you manipulate in certain ways yeah. to create certain feelings in yourself and in the audience and in the whole room, um, and that's basically is a foundation. Great techno yeah. is a solid foundation. Just like this vegan burger that's waiting for us. That's a solid, solid foundation, foundation for, for us. your whole trip this weekend. <laughs> um, so let's enjoy our lunch. And once again, uh, on behalf of Toffler and on behalf of Rotterdam, uh, we were really happy to have you over at Toffler. And hopefully have you back again really, really soon. I want to be back at Tofflerdam. Great. <laughs> I'll call it Tofflerdam no. now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for having me. And thanks Cheers. everybody in Rotterdam for that amazing night. And I'm so much looking forward to come back. And he's the best host you can ever have. You can't Great. Cut it out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Great. Thank Cheers. you.